welcome to the weekend edition of News Showcase. I am Priya, Tamil Nadu's first artificial intelligence news presenter. Reports say airlines have hiked their fares by four times to destinations within Tamil Nadu amid a huge demand for tickets on the eve of Harvest Festival. Most of the travellers were those who could not book on trains or buses after seats were sold out weeks before the festival. An air ticket from Chennai to the southern city of Tutikorin was a staggering 13,000 rupees, while on a normal day it was around just 4,000 rupees. Chennai is connected by direct flights to Coimbatore, Madurai, Trichy and Tutikorin, and all of them are considered busy and profitable routes. The airport in Trichy is also a hub for travellers entering India from Southeast Asia. The state-run bus operator ran 900 extra buses to back up the 2,000 scheduled services across the state. These buses were operated from all major towns and cities to handle rush. Reports said over 2 lakh people travelled from Chennai's two major bus terminals last evening. Traffic jams were also reported as the buses hit the highway one after the other. The two main train stations in Chennai, Central and Egmore, also saw large crowds of travellers crowding platforms and scrambling for a place on packed coaches. The Harvest Festival is a time when people travel to their hometowns to spend time with their families and friends. Reports say the opposition political bloc, India, has named the Congress Party's Malik Arjun Karge as its chairman. The decision comes after Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, who was also in the race, made way for Karge. People familiar with the matter said choosing a leader for the bloc was just one step in the many challenges facing the 26-party alliance. Seat sharing among them in the general elections this year is the biggest issue facing the bloc, which needs to stay united to fight the governing National Democratic Alliance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. PJP, the dominant party in the alliance, is working on strategies to win 400 of the 543 seats in the parliament's lower house. The Indian Air Force is holding its outreach program in Mumbai to connect with the local communities. The air show includes aerobatics by the Surya Kiran team on combat planes and the Sarang squad, which holds displays by military helicopters. The air show features a range of aerial stunts, including a fly-past and a low-level aerobatic show by Sukhoi fighter planes, freefalls and parachute displays by the Akasha Ganga team. Authorities advised air travellers to confirm their flights before arriving at the airport. Mumbai's main international airport said two of its runways will be closed for an hour from 12 noon till Sunday. Transport authorities have also imposed restrictions on the roads between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. during the air displays. Delhi was freezing, with the minimum temperature hitting 3 degrees Celsius as authorities issued an extreme weather alert. The temperature hovered around 4 degrees for a second day as northern India continues to be swept by a cold wave. Foggy conditions forced private carrier Indigo to divert a flight to Bangladesh as visibility was low at the northeastern city of Guwahati, where it was scheduled to land. Reports said passengers were stuck in the plane for several hours in the capital Dhaka. News agencies said foggy conditions and poor visibility also delayed more than dozen trains in Delhi by up to six hours. Transport systems are the worst hit by the extreme winter weather across northern India and affect routine activities severely. The top Hindu cleric in the Kanchipuram temple in Tamil Nadu has said devotees will hold a worship program for 40 days to mark the inauguration of the Ram temple later this month. Vijayendra Saraswati Swamigal said, The worship will be held at the headquarters in the holy site of Kashi and other locations under the guidance of Vedic intellectuals. Ram Temple will be officially unveiled in Ayodhya town on January 22nd amid a grand ceremony led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and attended by well-known figures from all walks of life. A large number of international guests are expected to be at the event, which has been planned by professionals and officials for months. The town of Ayodhya is under tight security for the event. Military leaders in India paid tributes at the National War Memorial in Delhi to mark Army Day when soldiers who laid down their lives in the service of the nation are remembered. The military's top commander, Chief of Defence Staff Anil Chauhan, the Chief of the Army General Manoj Pandey, Navy Chief Admiral Hari Kumar and Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chaudhari laid wreaths at the memorial. The Army Day is observed on January 15th and this year's parade has been shifted to Lucknow from Delhi. 
Report said for the first time, artificial intelligence tools will be used to identify the best marching contingent. An Indian Army unit showcased its prowess in avalanche rescue operations along the country's northern border. Daring harsh winter terrain, the ski patrol backed by a K-9 unit navigates treacherous snow-covered landscapes to swiftly identify avalanche victims. Equipped with safety gear, the troops demonstrated their mastery in high altitude, reaching locations where traditional means might fall short. The troops demonstrated a casualty evacuation process, ensuring a safe and rapid access to medical aid for the injured. The drill highlighted the specialized role played by the units in challenging environments. The Enforcement Directorate has told Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to appear for questioning on Thursday in its fourth summons in the liquor policy case. The Chief Minister has rejected all the previous summons as illegal and his Aam Admi party said the agency was trying to arrest him. He was earlier questioned by the Central Bureau of Investigation in April, but it did not name him as an accused. Three other leaders from his party have already been jailed in the case. According to reports, the CBI has said liquor companies were involved in making government policies to make profits. Reports also said the profits were allegedly used to fund political campaigns of the Ahmad Mi Party. Over 19 million people in Taiwan have voted in elections to choose a new president and a legislature. The outcome of the polls will impact its ties with China, which has threatened to bring the island under its control. The governing Democratic Progressive Party is seeking a third term, which is opposed to China's reunification plans. On the eve of the election, Beijing said a win for its candidate Vice President William Lai is not good for the island. Reports say voters are more concerned about jobs and the economy than about China. The main opposition, Kuomintang or KMT, has promised better ties with Beijing and peace in the Taiwan Strait, as the polls are closely followed in the Far East Asian region. The U.S. launched strikes on rebels in Yemen for a second day, which reports said targeted a radar site. The U.S. military said a warship fired Tomahawk missiles in what was described as a follow-on action. On Friday, the U.K. joined the U.S. in the first strikes on the rebels in response to attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea. The rebels who control most of Yemen said the attacks will not go unpunished and vowed to hit back. They said the attacks on vessels in the Red Sea were aimed at ships linked to Israel and a show of support for Palestinian Hamas militants. The rebels have fired rockets and launched drones more than 20 times since November, forcing shipping companies to avoid the route. Nearly 200,000 people are without power in the U.S. states of Michigan and Wisconsin after a winter storm swept through parts of the country. Forecasters have called it a life-threatening winter as icy winds, heavy snowfall and a cold Arctic chill hit the affected regions with temperatures likely to hit minus 45 degrees Celsius. The National Weather Service has issued alerts across the U.S. as more than 2,000 flights, most of them scheduled to fly out of Chicago, have been cancelled. Reports said more than 70 million people are under winter weather alerts. The extreme weather also hit campaigns for the presidential election, with Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley cancelling events ahead of the caucuses in Iowa. New Zealand's former Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has married her long-term friend Clark Gayford in a small event on North Island, about 300 kilometres from the capital Wellington. Ardern postponed her wedding planned for 2022 after her government imposed COVID restrictions on the country. The wedding follows a decade-long relationship and the couple have a five-year-old daughter. Ardern, who is 43 years old, was Prime Minister of New Zealand for five years. Before her resignation last January, she said she did not have the energy to continue in the role. She was much admired for her style of leadership, especially after mass shootings at mosques in Christchurch in 2019. Those were the top stories at this hour. Do join us, same time Monday, and have a great weekend.